Today I'm going to talk about bone strength and how to understand it fully whenever you are binding or flexi binding your character. So has this ever happened to you where you have your character and maybe you had released the layers and released the points and you try to flexi bind your layer. So you go back to the arm and then you select the bone and you hit control shift F and nothing happens. Well, that's because there's two parts to this binding method that you need to understand. So let's look at a simpler example. Here we have an example of a simple ball. It is one shape inside of a bone group layer. So if I drop that down, you can see there's just that one shape and then that bone. Now the binding is very simple. I have my bone strength on and this bone strength can control the ball. However, what I did is I went into the layer itself inside of the ball and I went to my bone and I release my layer and my points. So when I went back to my ball and I tried to move that bone around, you can see that it has bone strength, but there's absolutely nothing going on with that ball. Well, like I said, there are two parts to understanding how bone strength works whenever you're binding. So to understand this, you gotta know that your bone is actually going to be binding a layer. Now, whether that's the full layer itself or whether that is the points, that is what that bone is going to be binding itself to. And that is what the strength of that bone is going to be influencing. So right now, because this has absolutely no influence over the points or over the layers, because I went to the bone and I released my layers and points, this is basically just a floating bone. So how do I get that bone strength to connect back to the layer itself? It's actually really simple. You're gonna to go to the layer itself with the bone highlighted that you want that strength to control of that specific layer, you're gonna to go to bone and flexi bind the layer. Now, it's given me the option of flexi bind layer because I don't have points highlighted. If I had points highlighted, I'm simply just gonna hit control A to select all the points on this ball. Then I'm gonna to go to my bone layer and I'm going to go to flexi bind points. As you can see there, the check mark still remains and that's because I need to release the layer. Now with the layer release, I can now flexi bind my points. Now by default, Moho and Anime Studio is automatically going to take your bone strength and bind that to your points, not to your layer. And here's an example of what that looks like. Here I have this cat character that comes with Moho Pro 12. And when I take the bone and I stretch it, you can see this is the bone influence influencing the points. So at this particular section right here, you can see the influence is going to right about here and it's pulling against those points, thus dragging the points with it. So now let's go back to the character that we had before. So just like the ball, think about this character just like that ball. And now we need to connect everything back together. Now this can be a pretty long and tedious process, but because of some of the things that are on this character, I'm gonna have a mix between layer binding and flexi binding. So what I would actually go and do first, I would first go through and layer bind all the layers. So in this case, the first layer that's going to be controlling a big portion of this character is this head. So as you know, layer binding does not need bone strength. So I would remove that bone strength completely, thus giving me the same effect as if this bone strength bone had no influence over its points. This bone does absolutely nothing. But because I know this is a whole layer for the head, I just want to bind that layer to that bone. So I'm gonna to go to my bind layer bone tool and I'm gonna click on that bone. And now when I go and I manipulate that head bone, you can see everything is now connected. However, because I haven't done any binding, nothing is connected to these bones. So do you know how I said that flexi binding points is the default? Well, flexi binding layers has the exact same result. So if I go to the head bone, and I go through and make sure that all of my layers are open, except this one, this is a switch layer and that's gonna take too long to go through all of those groups. But as you can see here, I have all of the groups expanded. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all of these groups and I'm going to highlight them. Then I'm gonna to go to my bone and I'm going to flexi bind my layer. Now, if I did this properly, you can see that I'm going to get the same result like I did before. There's going to be weird amounts of stretching. Now this is a good sign because it at least tells you that, okay, now that bone strength is now affecting something. So when I go into the individual layers, such as this arm, 
and I click on that arm layer and I hit Control Shift F. I now have control over that arm like I should. Likewise, when I go to Alt, right click, and then I select this forearm layer and I do Control Shift F, I now have control over that arm layer. And last, if I hit that switch layer for the hand, and in this case, I'm going to select the hand layer group, and I'm going to layer bind that bone. Now when I go and I manipulate this entire character's arm, you can see everything is connected just as it should be. Now, in case you're still confused, I'm going to undo everything that I just did. And if you didn't catch it and you're still wondering, McCoy, why didn't you just flexibind do selected bones for flexibinding? Remember what I said? This strength has no control over anything. I have to bind it to something, whether it's the points or the layer in order for use bones for selected flexibinding to work. So just to show you an example, I am going to go to that arm layer and I'm going to bind that bone to this arm layer. You can see there's nothing happening. Okay, so let me go to the arm layer itself. I'll select the bone and I will use selected bones for flexi binding. Watch what happens, nothing. And that's because this bone strength is actually doing a lot more than you think it is. It actually needs to select a point or a layer in order for it to work properly. So again, if your character is doing this, this is not good. This is gonna cause you a lot of issues. However, if your character is doing this, this is better than the bones not controlling anything at all because that's where a lot of people just give up. But this is just one step closer to use selected bones for flexibinding because now you know that the bone strength is controlling something. I hope this tutorial helped you understand how bone strength really works with flexibinding. If it does help, like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe for more videos. I'll see you later.